that. Um, unfortunately, I had to take that call. This is the joys of, of a live video. Unfortunately, it happens to the best of us. Anyway, we were talking about collages, um, which I happen to love. And they're very, very simple, and they shouldn't be rushed. Um, it's something that, in my opinion, you need to take your time. As you're working on other projects, um, you might see a flower, you might see a seahorse, you might see a shell, anything like that that you could use on one of your patterns, and you can just lay it down. You really need the space to just leave it where it is and, and let it build on its own. If you rush it, the likelihood is you're not going to like how it comes out. Um, and that's why, although I say never, because I may do a small one just to give people the technique, um, but on one of the big patterns, I will not do a class on it because I really just don't think it, need, it should be rushed. And of course, I can't find my video now. Go figure. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. So, anybody who knows me knows I've collected unicorns and fairies for most of my life, ever since I was a little girl. And here is the unicorn that she came out, re came out with recently, this year. So we've got that one, we've got the reindeer. And then she created, and this is one that I just might, might actually do a class on. Um, because these are very small. They're 16 by 20. They're her, part of her teeny tiny collection. And what she does is she groups like patterns together and she scaled them down much smaller. So this one is the group four. And it is her um, turtle, the octopus, and the mermaid in the bottle. And I really, really like it. And like I said, all of these are no bigger than... 16 by 20. So this is one that I definitely, well, I not, shouldn't say definitely, but I more than likely will do a class on if I ever do one on collage. It's a lot of fun. It really is, and it's super easy. Um, and then I got her sea turtle, sea well in again, which I've had in the shop before, but they sell out very, very fast. This one ends up being 45 by 60. Uh Nola the unicorn is 35 by 47. And these can be put as, the, as a, a wall hanging on their own or um, the center of a quilt. Peppermint, the reindeer, is 35 by 35. So that's what came in. All right, now we're gonna do our stitch happens. Part K. After this, we only have one more video and um, then the assembly. So two more videos after this and we are done with this one. And then I will work on quilting it, which is going to be a lot of fun. So what we're doing right now is this part right here underneath the spool. It's this part right here. So we're going to work in half square triangles that we're turning into pinwheels. And we're gonna be working on um, flying geese, traditional flying geese, and basic piecing today. So here is what we're working on. Um, this is, if you're looking, it's on my right side. So you need orange, yellow, blue, two different greens, and your white and yellow. And everything we're gonna be using with this is the same stuff that we have been using pretty much. You need a scissor, a marking pen. I happen to use friction because I like friction. And just a small ruler for making straight lines. That's all you need. I have already um, sewn some of this together for you. You know, just some of the straight piecing. I've made one of the flying geese, so we're gonna do the other flying geese. 
and um, I've done one part of the half square triangles pinwheels but I left some so I could show you how to do it all right I'm gonna work on the top and we're gonna do a flying geese so we have our rectangle which is our bottom part and gonna be the main part of our flying geese see just like this and then we have the squares for the uh, for the um, tops and these are roughly half a little bit more than half it's like um, not quite three quarters but more than half in between there the size of this width so whatever that number is traditionally um, or you can do this one too right now these are two and two and a half I believe so that makes these two and a half inch squares and it works out to be a little bit more than half of your rectangle. So all you do is you're going to put a square and you're going to draw a line from one corner to the other corner and so just a width, thread width on this side of the corner so that when we do that and we iron it up you've got one part. Now you have to do these separately because they are going to overlap at the top. Uh, the other thing, as usual, that I recommend is Bass Press. As far as I'm concerned, there isn't enough uses for Bass Press in this project. You're working on small pieces, and it really does help with the um, piecing process. Because especially when you're working on tiny pieces like this, you don't want the, excuse me, you don't want them to stretch at all. Okay, so we have one part, and now I'm going to put the other part down, and I'm going to stitch just on this side of the line. when the needle is threaded. So again with little bit I do feel like I have a child, a baby all over again. Especially with all the different late night feedings and early morning feedings. It's kind of crazy. And my daughter who has my granddaughter all she does is laugh at me and tells me, welcome to the neighborhood. And I just keep laughing at her and yelling at her saying, I was in that neighborhood way before she was. Okay, now we're just going to set the scene, iron it up. little bit of spray starch and we're going to cut the excess this part of the fabric about a quarter of an inch from our stitch line you really don't need that extra bulk at all and I find especially with flying geese it helps not to have those extra layers because when you run the risk of them moving in opposite directions and back and forth and then your stitching isn't going to be really um, good. You run the risk of it bubbling or having a fold or something like that. It's just not not really worth it and not necessary at all. Okay. Here we are with our flying geese and they're going to look like this. Now, if they're done correctly, you should have at least a quarter of an inch space before you hit the point. Before you hit this point right here, you should have at least a quarter of an inch. Now, when I lay these on top of each other and go to sew them, I'm looking at the back and making sure I do not cross into the yellow when I'm stitching. 
I don't want to lose my point. That kind of defeats the purpose of a flying geese. Now, if you want to make sure everything is nice and straight and the points meet. Okay, I'm going to put where these lines intersect where I stitched, I'm going to put a pin. And then, on my second piece, I'm going to put the pin in exactly the same spot. Now, as long as the pin is upright and straight, then you can put a couple of pins on either side to hold it in place. You don't want the pins off to an angle, because then it's not straight and it's not lined up. You want it straight up and down. I don't pin a lot, I'll be honest with you. There's only certain times, and then you can take this pin that you use to get them together, line them up, out. I only pin when I really need to, um, to make sure things are lined up, or make sure I stitch where I'm supposed to be stitching. Now, as I'm stitching, again, I'm making sure I do not go into that yellow at the bottom of the flying geese. Even if you have to just do a scant quarter, that is better than cutting off your points. Does it always work? No. But it should work for the most part. There you go. Like I said, it doesn't always work, but for the most part, it should. Now, I want... Okay, these, I have the seams going out on this row. So this one, I want to make sure the seam goes that way so that when I piece it, it will piece, it will, um, the seams will line up perfect. I could say perfect, but as perfect as they're ever going to line up. I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am. And I think I lost people when I had to redo the video. So who do we have on today? Anybody? Okay. Now, I'm going to sew this to this and this to this. And our first row will be done. On these two outside pieces, I just iron them to the dark, the seams to the dark side. It's not going to matter for lining up. And what it will do is make sure we don't have a shadow, especially behind the white. It will matter the seam, this seam that I'm making right now. Um, and it's still going, I'm going to actually iron this one to the yellow side. Just because of lining the seams up with the next row.
So, we have this seam going that way, this seam going this way. So both of these seams are ironed towards the flying geese. This seam is ironed towards the darker blue. This seam here is ironed towards the darker green. By doing that, when I lay this one on top, these seams will line up, and that's called nesting. So nesting is one seam going one way, one seam going the opposite way. And when you do that and you pin them, so this top seam is going this way, the bottom seam is going towards my right. They will lock together and that is called nesting. And that's how you make sure you got them lined up. So, I hope you are enjoying the videos. I hope you are enjoying the little bit saga. And I'm sorry for those of you who are not cat people, because I was not a cat person. Still, I'm not a cat person. But um, when you're in a position that you have to take care of a defenseless animal, or they may die, you become a cat person. It's been a, uh, quite a learning experience, I can tell you that, because I've only had dogs. And dogs are completely different when they're little than cats. Cats, there's a lot that you have to do for them that they don't do for themselves. And you don't have that with dogs. At least, not that I know of. We have, let's see, yesterday we got batting in, so we're all full of batting again. Friday I have an order from uh, Quilting Treasures coming in. Actually, I think it's three separate orders coming in. So I posted some sneak peeks on Facebook of that, and I will let you know as soon as it comes in. May not see a video until Saturday. It depends on when in the day it comes in. All right, this is where we're at so far. We have this one big piece and I've already sewed these two together which are gonna go underneath here. And I have um, ironed the seam towards the dark green so that it will piece with, it will align with this one. Now we're gonna work on pinwheels and half square triangles which are fairly easy. All you do is you have two squares, right sides together. You're going to draw a line diagonally from one corner to the other corner. And then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch from that line on one side, turn it around, and sew a quarter of an inch on the other side. When you cut on that line, which I've already sewn for you, you will have two half square triangles. If you make four half square triangles and alternate, how they are laid out, you will get a pinwheel. Now I am ironing these with the blue side up so that when I flip them, the seam is on the dark side. And these are really tiny, like really tiny. And I will definitely be using starch on these, or best press, I should say. our two half square triangles. I will be cutting off our little dog ears, that's what these are called. Um, 
Most of the time on bigger piecing, I do not cut the dog ears off because I have found that it does help me piece and make sure everything's lined up. But with these small, tiny pieces, I really don't want that extra bulk. Um, and it can throw off the stitching and the piecing. So... There. This is how we are going to sew them together. Now you have a pinwheel. And the idea of the pinwheel is all of these pieces are going in the same direction. Counterclockwise or clockwise doesn't make a difference. And by sewing them, these two together, then these two together, and then both of these little mini rows together will have a pinwheel. There's a lot you can do with half square triangles. Um, I used to do a really fun class called Fun with Half Square Triangles, and I love it. Now also, little tidbit, by ironing these seams the same way on all of these half square triangles, you will have an opportunity to nest them. So this top seam is going to the left, and the bottom seam is going to the right. The points will line up perfectly if you nest them. On these tiny pieces, even though we're nesting seams, I will not pin them. They're just too small. Uh, make sure that I got these going the right way. If you line them up and just hold them, if they are aligned correctly, they will be nice and flat. If there's any bulk there, recheck your seam line, um, your seam positioning to make sure that they're lined up. Now this one, I am ironing the seam to the right, my right, and the bottom one, I'll iron the seam to the left. Again, that's just going to help you line things up. When I piece these together, these two halves, the top and the bottom, I will probably be sewing them together with a scant quarter of an inch because they are so small, I do not want to... Um, cut off the, the center part of the pinwheel. You should still have a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but it is a little bit harder. When you're dealing with smaller pieces. Pam, are you still, Pamela, are you still on? Miss Pamela. Anybody on? I want to make sure that you can hear me and everything's okay. Okay. Here are our two parts of our pinwheel. And I have the seams going in opposite directions so I can nest the seams. Again, just like when we're doing flying geese, I'm going to be looking at the line where they intersect. And if I have to do a shorter seam, I will. Just to make sure I don't lose my points.
Wow. That came out pretty good. All right. There is our small, tiny, teeny pinwheel right here. Now we're going to sew this piece to this piece, and then all three of these pieces will sew together. Once we've sewed this row together, then it's time to sew it to this one. And we'll be done. So if you've had a chance, let me know what you think of these quilt along videos. Are you enjoying them? Are you getting anything out of them? Uh, if you don't like them, let me know too. Maybe I can change something. After we're done with this, I will definitely be doing ruler work, which I'm looking forward to a lot. I love ruler work. And I think you're going to enjoy it too. Now I'm just going to sew our little pinwheel to the darker green. And if these are not lining up perfect, they're going to be bigger. It's very, very common. And don't pay it any mind. Don't freak out. Because we can trim up these solid pieces afterwards before we put them all completely together. This pinwheel, especially in such a small space and a small piece of fabric you're dealing with, um, that stitching, I recommend a scant quarter on it, but with all of that stitching, it's going to eat up a lot of fabric very, very quickly. So, for instance, the piece that we created with the pinwheel is not the same size as the green right next to it, or it's not going to be the same size as the other greens either. See? I'm not worried about it. Hi, Janet. Oh, I'm so happy, Janet. Janet is enjoying the videos. She said she had actually bought this kit uh, over a year ago, and it was too overwhelming for her. And now with the videos, she's made it, it's much easier. I'm glad. That was the whole, that's the whole idea behind these videos. Between helping you with little basic uh, piecing techniques and the tips. And just putting something together. I love this pattern because it is just a great way to shop your stash and literally just go through your stash. Doesn't have to have any specific, you could have, if you didn't want it rainbow, you could do it all three different colors in different fabrics. I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. I just want everybody to enjoy this. Um, I'm out of best press. Thank you very much. Um, I want everybody to enjoy this. I want you to have a good time. Uh, I want you to complete a project and maybe make something kind of fun for your sewing room. But realistically, it should be fun. Don't take it too seriously. Um, there's no quilt police here. And I'm assuming there's no quilt police at your house. So just make it work. It's better done than perfect. Okay, 
See how we have this space here? I'll show you how I'm taking care of that. It's real simple. I'm just gonna cut it. <laughs> just lining up my ruler with it and trimming it up. That's all I'm gonna do. It will fit. There is plenty of play with this project that we can make it work without a problem. All I'm doing is evening it up. If you put a line from the ruler on your seam a lot, on your seam, making sure you're nice and straight, you can trim off an eighth or a scant quarter of an inch really simply. Voila. Guess what? It looks like I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way it should be it really needs to be fun if you're having a hard time you're getting anxious then you're doing something wrong just enjoy yourself okay this was our final row now we're going to sew this one to this one on this middle row the seams are ironed towards the blue and towards the green. So on this one, the seam is going to be ironed towards the dark green on right here. I iron them away from the pinwheel column just to help with bulk because it gets this, having all of these pieces line up in this, coming to a point in the center can be pretty bulky. Um, you can kind of play with this seam and this is probably one of the few times that I might iron the seam open just to cut down on some bulk. But you don't have a lot of that in this quilt, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Traditionally, we do not iron our seams open unless you're dealing with something like the pinwheel or kaleidoscope. If you have wedges that you're all sewing into the center, um, that way it will meet and you won't have this big knot in the center of your block. So Janet, are you gonna keep following me and maybe do some of the ruler work as I do it? Have you tried ruler work yet? Well, this might be a great opportunity, Janet, because it really is a lot of fun. I don't do a lot of free motion, but I do ruler work. I am one of those people that I have been quilting for a very long time, and I can't walk down the street and chew gum at the same time. I have tried free motion many times to not the greatest results. But ruler work really does help. Oh, Janet, come on. You had to take the plunge. <laughs> uh, ruler work really does help. The rulers slash templates, whatever you want to call them, um, take one part of the equation out. And it really does make a big difference. At least for me, it does. And I find it, it it's very creative. It takes a lot of the stress of free motion quilting out of the, out of the process, and it's just fun. You, are as, you can be as creative as your imagination. You're not pigeon-toed into one template, one design, and that's it. It's, it really is very relaxing, and I find it enjoyable. All right, our block is done. 
Yes, I will trim up this eighth of an inch on either side just to make sure it's nice and square. Not all these blocks are square though, as far as what we've created. Some are rectangles. So don't get hung up on having to square everything up because you really don't need to. You want a nice, clean, straight edge, that's all you need. What's more important is making sure wherever possible your seams and your points line up because that's what you're going to notice. You're not going to notice somebody cutting an eighth of an inch off. Nobody's going to see that. But what they will notice is making sure all the points for your pinwheel are in the center and they all line up or your points and your, your seams line up here. That's it. So just have fun with it. We have one more video before we get to the assembly. And the assembly is mainly this bottom teal part and the rest of the white. Um, and then we get to quilt. I will put, uh, uh, stop doing videos for a few weeks until I can get the project quilted and figure out what I'm gonna do. Um, but then we'll start up all over again. As I said in the email, I'm moving these videos, these live videos to Wednesdays just because of between the kitten and everything else that's been crazy lately. Um, I've had to postpone the Monday videos. Um, it's just too hectic. So we're gonna be doing these Wednesday morning from here on out. And I hope you continue to join me and enjoy it and comment. And I look forward to the rule of work and having some fun and completing this project. Who knows? Maybe I'll even help you with machine binding after this once we get it all quilted. Which seems to be something that sometimes is frowned upon, but in my line of work, done is better than perfect. And hand is a nasty four-letter word as far as I'm concerned. I don't like hand sewing anything, and that includes my binding. And I find binding by machine is actually stronger, especially with kids' quilts and things that are gonna be washed a lot more. So who knows, maybe I'll show you my tips and tricks for how to bind. Thanks everybody, I hope you have a great day and if you are anywhere around today, you wanna come on in and it's Stitch and Bitch Day, you can sit and sew with us. It doesn't cost you a dime, just bring your machine, whatever you're working on and come and sit and sew. And who knows, maybe you'll have the added bonus of getting to see a little bit while she's awake. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Janet. Have a wonderful day yourself. Oh, all the way on the West Coast. Have a great day. Get ready for work. See you later. Bye, everybody.